Hello friends, I am Komal Malhotra. Today, I will talk about Chapter 7 from Class 11 Psychology, Human Memory. The chapter has been divided into two parts. We will go through Part 1, which will cover Nature of Memory, Information Processing Approach and Levels of Processing. Let us now learn about them one by one. Nature of Memory let us first understand what is memory. Memory is retaining and recalling information over a period of time depending on the cognitive task to be performed. For example, retaining a telephone number till you dial it or remembering addition techniques that you learnt long back in childhood. Nature of memory consists of three independent interrelated stages, namely encoding, storage and retrieval. Encoding. This is the first stage which refers to a process by which information is recorded and registered for the first time so that it becomes usable by our memory system. Whenever an external stimulus impinges on our sensory organs, it generates neural impulses which are received in different areas of the brain and meaning is derived. It is then represented in a way so that it can be processed further. Storage. This is the stage in which the encoded information is retained and held over a period of time. Encoded information must be stored so that it can be put to use later. Retrieval. This refers to a stage of bringing the stored information to awareness so that it can be used for performing various cognitive tasks such as problem solving or decision making. Memory failure can occur in any of the above three stages. You may fail to recall an information because you did not encode it properly or the storage was weak so you could not access or retrieve it when required. We now come to the information processing approach, also known as the stage model of memory. This model was developed by Atkinson and Schifferin in 1968 with the advent of computers, wherein the human memory was seen as a system that processes information in the same way as a computer does. Just as a computer has a temporary memory and a permanent memory, and is able to manipulate the contents of its memories and display the output on the screen based on commands. In the same way, human beings do register information, store and manipulate the stored information depending on the task that they need to perform. For example, when you are required to solve a mathematical problem, the memory relating to mathematical operations such as addition or subtraction is activated and put to use and the output that is the problem solution is received just like in a computer. The stage model proposes three memory systems namely sensory memory, short term memory and long term memory. Sensory memory. The incoming information first enters the sensory memory. Sensory memory has a large capacity but it is of a very short duration, that is, less than one second. It registers information from each of the senses with reasonable accuracy as an exact replica of the stimulus. Sensory memory may be iconic, that is visual, or echoic, that is auditory. For example, the trail of light that stays after the bulb is switched off is an example of iconic sensory register. Similarly, hearing reverberations of a sound when the sound has stopped is an example of echoic sensory register. Short term memory. This is the second memory store. Only information that is attended to enters the second memory store called the short term memory or STM, which holds small amount of information for a brief period of time, usually for 30 seconds or less. Information in the short term memory is primarily encoded acoustically, that is, in terms of sound. And unless rehearsed continuously, it may get lost from the short term memory in less than 30 seconds. 
long term memory. Materials that survive the capacity and duration limitations of the short term memory finally enter the long term memory or the LTM which has a vast capacity. It is a permanent storehouse of all information that may be as recent as what you ate for breakfast yesterday to as distant as how you celebrated your sixth birthday. Information entering the long term memory store is never forgotten because it gets encoded semantically that is in terms of the meaning that the information carries. What you experience as forgetting is in fact retrieval failure that is you cannot retrieve the stored information for various reasons. In the stage model the flow of information through various memory stores is monitored by four control processes. These are selective attention, maintenance rehearsal, elaborative rehearsal and chunking. Let us examine them individually. 1. Selective attention. As you have already read in chapter 5, selective attention is the first control process that decides what will travel from sensory registers to the short term memory. Only that information which is paid attention to enters the short term memory from the sensory registers. All other information fades away quickly. 2. Maintenance rehearsal. This control process is set into motion by the short term memory to retain information for as much time as is required. These kinds of rehearsals simply maintain information through silent or vocal repetitions and when such repetitions discontinue, the information is lost. 3. Chunking. This control process also operates short term memory to increase its capacity. Through chunking, it is possible to expand the capacity of short term memory, which is otherwise 7 plus minus 2. For example, if you are told to remember a string of digits such as 19471942004, whose number of digits exceeds the capacity of STM, you may create the chunks as 1947, 1949, and 2004 and remember them. 4. Elaborative rehearsal. Information enters the long term memory from the short term memory through elaborative rehearsals. These rehearsals attempt to connect the new information to the existing information in the long term memory. In elaborative rehearsals, one attempts to analyze the information in terms of the various associations it arouses. It involves organization of the incoming information in as many ways as possible. The number of associations you can create around the new information will determine its permanence. Example, remembering the meaning of the word humanity will be easier if the meanings of concepts such as compassion, truth and benevolence are already in place. Levels of processing. The levels of processing view of memory was proposed by Craig and Lockhart in 1972 as against Atkinson's boxes in the head scheme. This approach emphasizes that it is possible to analyze any incoming information at more than one level. A stimulus can be processed at a deep level comprising abstract and semantic analysis or at a shallow level involving sensory analysis. Analyzing information in terms of its structural and phonetic features amounts to shallower processing level. While encoding it in terms of the meaning it carries, that is the semantic encoding, is the deepest processing level that leads to memory that resists forgetting. For example, let us consider word recognition. At a shallow level, Visual configuration may be analyzed as per physical or sensory features like lines and angles. At a deeper level, the stimuli is matched with stored information. Example, one of the letters of the word corresponding to the pattern identified as A. At the highest level, the recognized pattern may trigger associations or images based on the person's past experience with the word. 
Components of Short-Term Memory Short-Term Memory has many components. It is not a passive storehouse, but rather a workbench that holds a wide variety of memory materials that are constantly handled, manipulated and transformed as we perform various cognitive tasks. This workbench is also called the working memory. Components of working memory Phonological loop This is the first component of working memory. It holds a limited number of sounds and unless rehearsed, they decay within two seconds. Visuospatial sketchpad This is the second storehouse of working memory. It stores visual and spatial information and like the phonological loop, the capacity of the sketchpad is also limited. Third, the central executive. This part of the working memory organizes information from the phonological loop, the visuospatial sketchpad, as well as from the long-term memory. It allocates attentional resources to be distributed to various informations needed to perform a given cognitive operation. The central executive also monitors, plans and controls behavior. Types of long-term memory. Long-term memory can be declarative or procedural. Declarative memory can further be divided into episodic memory or semantic memory. Let us first understand declarative memory. All information pertaining to facts names, dates, etc. are a part of declarative memory. Example, a rickshaw has three wheels or India became independent on August 15, 1947 or a frog is an amphibian. All these constitute declarative memory. Episodic memory contains biographical details or memories of a certain experience and is emotional in nature. It has an autobiographical reference. Example, seeing the ocean for the first time, enjoying parasailing, etc. Semantic memory. It is the memory of general awareness, concepts, rules and abstract ideas. Example, meaning of non-violence or remembering that 2 plus 6 is equal to 8. This type of memory is less susceptible to forgetting. Therefore, Recalling what you ate for breakfast calls on information in the episodic memory, whereas multiplying 37 by 3 calls on information in the semantic memory. Both these are a part of declarative memory. Procedural memory. Procedural memory refers to memories relating to procedures or performing various tasks and skills such as how to ride a bicycle, how to make tea or how to play basketball. Procedural memory cannot be expressed readily, verbally. Initially, when we learn a skill, we think about what we are doing and can describe our actions verbally. This is declarative knowledge. As we master the skill, the declarative knowledge is replaced by procedural knowledge and we gradually become less able to describe precisely how we perform the actions. Classification of long-term memory. Flashbulb memories. These are memories of events that are very arousing or surprising. Such memories are very detailed and tied to a particular places, dates and times. They are like a photo taken with an advanced model camera. Autobiographical memory. These are personal memories. They are not distributed evenly throughout our lives. Some periods in our lives produce more memories than others. Example, no memories are reported pertaining to early childhood, particularly during the first four years. This is called childhood amnesia. There is a dramatic increase in the frequency of memories in the 20s. Around 30 years of age, decline in certain kinds of memory starts. During old age, the most recent years of life are likely to be well remembered. Implicit memory. Implicit memory is a kind of memory that a person is not aware of. It is a memory that is retrieved automatically. Example, typing. 
With this, we end the first part of the chapter, Human Memory. We first learnt about nature of memory, information processing approach, and levels of processing. We then proceeded to learn about components of working memory. This was followed by types of long-term memory and classification of long-term memory as flashbulb memories, autobiographical memories, and implicit memories. Thank you. Thank you.